likes. I am shooting on my phone because I lost this really little tiny piece that connects my camera to my tripod, like my ring light. So I'm in front of a window and I'm just gonna do this because I just have this observation I had just made like in the last like few minutes. And it's that Catholic women do not talk about, in general, being a good homemaker. You don't, I just don't hear this and I don't see it. Um, I know I love my Catholic YouTube ladies and I know that we have addressed this like in our summer book club and things like that. And I know you guys are all like awesome women who I'm sure are striving to be Proverbs, Proverbs 31 wives, but man, the Protestant community has us here. I'm listening to these women talk about being good homemakers and organizing their time and organizing routines and and it's so good and it's just all over. It's all over YouTube, it's all over the um, podcast arena, the blog, I mean, don't even get me started on like the blogs out there. And I don't know exactly what it is. I've never heard, well, maybe I do. I've never heard a priest preach on being a good homemaker, ever. If anything, when we go into those, those like small sections of the Bible where it talks about being like subservient to your husband and then I think it's, I can't remember if it's Corinthians or what, but it's like, you know, wives submit to your husbands and husbands love your wives as, as Jesus loved the church. It's so good. But I've had priests like shy away from that because we were in like a liberal town and you know, women get these like looks on their face when they think about like, I'm gonna be subservient to my husband, which you gotta get beyond that because you know, you're like this, right? Your souls are intertwined. So yeah, it's okay to be subservient to your husband. It doesn't mean like, I'm his slave, but it means that you need to be respectful and you need to fulfill your vocation. And one of those vocations is like taking care of the home and making sure that you look kind of cute and you know, cooking. And like, I just think that, um, that we do have these roles that Protestant women just seem to like get. And I think that some of it is they are really good with like women groups. Like every Protestant I know is like involved in some kind of a small group. And in those environments, women can really support one another in terms of like building up their vocations. The other thing I think is that most of their preachers are married. And so they're preaching about this from the pulpit, I'm assuming, like talking about, you know, the roles of husbands and wives and what that looks like and what's expected. I love priests, of course, like they are so holy, such holy men and lovely, lovely people, but they're not married in the sense that it's like a, as like a minister is, most of them. Now I have one priest that is married, but you know, they're married to the church, but it's a different dynamic than like the kind of the nitty gritty day in and day out. And I think a lot of them are really fearful to say, look women, you have a responsibility. When you chose the vocation of marriage, you chose a vocation that involved kind of staying on top of your stuff, making sure that you run your household well. And honestly, this is something that I've struggled with. Um, for a long time. I was talking to Ryan about it last night. I'm like, why has this been such a struggle? Well, when we got married, I was in law school. Then after law school, I was studying for the bar. And then I was clerking for a judge, get, got pregnant, and then I had Chloe. And so up until I had Chloe, I was always working full time. And I would clean, and we had a small, you know, small apartment or something. So it was just, it wasn't hard. And then Chloe came along, and so you're in like new baby mode. And then we joined the military, and then we got pregnant with Neil. And then we had Neil and then Ryan deployed and then Ryan got back and there, and, but then we were planning on getting out of the army and then we lived, we lived with his mom and we did that earlier on as well. And so now in this stage of my life, I feel like we finally are at this place where it's like, okay, I can probably get on top of this now. Like it's time to kind of just be a big girl and stop using excuses and figure out some routines and schedules that are really going to start like blessing your home more. Because I am honest to God, you guys, everybody in this household doesn't put their things away. Like we just don't. And it's, I don't know who started it. I was really, really tidy as a child. My parents were very tidy people. I don't have like the whole, my parents are hoarders. My parents were very tidy. They were very minimalistic. My house, my parents had nothing like, and they like, cleaned it and put their clothes away and it was lovely and my sister was actually the messiest one of the family and she is so tidy now i'm the messiest one i like to blame ryan because he's kind of a throw the floor clothes on the floor guy and you know that's not to say he doesn't pick up he's really good at picking up 
but you know he's tired after a day and like the de the general pickup doesn't necessarily happen every day and then so then I think I kind of developed that like relax like I'm gonna because you know you have to either you have to meet somebody like I'm not gonna like sit there and tell him constantly like pick up his socks, right? Oh my gosh, I heard this really beautiful story, this really sad story, this woman who's lost her husband, it was on Dr. Laura, and she was like, what I wouldn't give to have my husband's socks laying on the floor. So women, don't nag your husbands about picking up the socks. Pick up the socks yourself, it's not a big deal. But I'm just saying that as like over the years, I kind of fell into a more, more relaxed situation versus like fighting him to like meet me, you know, and like, marriage takes work like there's been times where I was like well we both need to be pitching it equally whatever that's supposed to mean and give me a break that's you know what his vocation is his his side and my vocation is my side and I need to take responsibility for my vocation and not get resentful if after a very long like 12 hour day he wants to sit down for an hour you know what I'm saying and I don't get resentful anymore for the most part unless I'm hormonal but <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. It's just interesting. So I have to say that like this Lent, for some reason, my heart is just really on fire for like putting together schedules and making things start happening and stop using the excuse of like, I like to be flexible or I like to be like spontaneous or I was dealing with schedules for 17 years or however long I was in school for. And so like, this is just me bucking the system. No, no, those are just excuses. And I have to say, ladies, this book right here, The Mother's Mother's Rule of Life by Holly Pierlot or Pierlo. She know I she gets it. I want to write her. I think I probably will because she talks about that exact thing of like my house is chaotic. It doesn't feel good, but I'm constantly being like, well, it doesn't feel good to be on a schedule, but it also doesn't feel good to be in a messy house. So what am I gonna do about that? So in the next few weeks, I really hope that I can like cruise through this book even though it's like really feeding my soul and I don't really want to stop but I'm gonna try to cruise through it I'm I don't know like a fourth of the way through so that I can make different videos about this topic because I think that this needs to be addressed you guys like as Catholic women you know we are tasked with with being good homemakers. And this book is Catholic and it does talk about all that. And so I highly, highly suggest this book. And I love my Protestant sisters who are just really embracing this and sharing like their tips and tricks for being a good homemaker because it's all it is. It's all for the glory of God. It's all for our vocation. Um, I also wanna do a video coming up about mortification because as a wife and mother, there is a lot of like little moments of mortification that you, should see his blessings, right? Like when you scrub the toilet every day. Or I just had to like wipe off my kids just completely mud covered outfit and shoes and little mortifications that you can give to God and that he will bless. So I just wanna know like if this is something that you guys have thought about, if you are like an on point homemaker or if this is something you struggle with, if you want specific videos, put them down below and I will do my best to share any wisdom that I come across I am not wise in this situation, but you know who is, is, oh my gosh, Rhiannon, I'm gonna, Rhiannon, 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 see, this, I'm gonna get right, girl, but her channel, My Little Domestic Church, My Little Domestic Church, is gonna be pinned down below as well as up in a card. Please go check out her homemaking list because she is someone who, from what I've gathered from her videos, she was working on this for quite a while, like in her heart. And then she started her YouTube channel and like started ministering to other women. And, and so now she has all this great wisdom to share versus like me who's like in the mess of it, trying to like struggle along and hopefully coming to a place of like consistency because I'm really good at starting things and I'm absolutely terrible at finishing them, which is why I did not finish the Comrade series because this is just my personality. Plus like you guys just felt this, this felt like really necessary. And so I felt like I needed to drop the Comrade series, at least for now. Um, to do more of a daily structure thing. I'm really good at minimalizing, but I'm terrible at like addressing the things that come in after I minimize or, and or just like keeping on top of it. So I wanna know if you re relate to this. I just wanted to get this casual video out. I wish my camera was working because I know the quality is so much better. Yeah, so that's it. So I just wanna know like what you think in the comments, where you struggle with your homemaking. Let's talk homemaking. Let's, let's spend this Lent kind of really pondering what God is calling us to do. That's what I have to say. God bless. Have a beautiful day. And again, comment down below. 
and like this video and subscribe if you haven't already because I know a lot of you haven't subscribed. All right, guys, until next time, this is Laura. Bye.